As Columbus still faces problems with illegal dumping, now more than ever, the city is determined to put an end to it. Today on City Chat. We're here with Tim Swagger, the head of Division of Refuse Collection for the City of Columbus, to talk about this persistent problem in the city, illegal dumping. Thank you, Tim, for joining us today. And would you mind talking about what, first, what illegal dumping is? Oh, certainly, I'd love to. Thank you, Josie, and welcome to the uh, viewers. Uh, illegal dumping is a persistent problem throughout the country and also here in the city of Columbus. We're no exception. Uh, the Department of Public Service is focused on reducing illegal dumping. Uh, what, what's occurring throughout the country and here is people are improperly disposing of items that shouldn't be going to our landfills or if they should, they be, should be packaged properly and put into the correct containers. So we have people driving around the city or or pr improperly disposing, mainly in our alleyways. They're just getting rid of construction debris, concrete items, sometimes hazardous materials that they shouldn't be going into the uh, trash stream. And then those items are being left in the alleyways. It has a social economic impact to those neighborhoods. It, it brings down the values of our neighborhoods when this happens. It, people see that blight and it, it has an impact that we have to correct. In your opinion, can you tell us why people illegally dump in Columbus? Sure, illegal dumping is a problem throughout the country and here in Columbus is no exception to that. Uh, a lot of the illegal dumping, we've just got to keep reminding people on what they're supposed to do with their materials, how to properly dispose of that and where it goes. So we're going to do that through some education, through Keep Columbus Beautiful, do some education. But under Mayor Ginther's plan for, to combat the illegal dumping, it's really looking at that three-pronged approach on what we can do to stop the illegal dumping. And that is through the prevention, education and enforcement. What would you say that we can do as a community to um, prevent this uh, whole issue? Sure, it, there's three pronged approach to this. It's prevention, education, and enforcement that the city's taking on this. The, as a citizen, the best thing for us to do is, is the enforcement side, notifying the city of things, uh, contacting 645-3111 when there are issues, notifying us, we respond to those, Within three days, we'll respond to each of those. We have solid waste inspectors that are dedicated to this type of service. So they'll go out and identify the uh, illegal dumping, try to identify it where it came from, hold them accountable if we can, if not, clean it up to make sure it doesn't become a health hazard, but also to start on that ed enforcement side of it. Out of curiosity, are there certain parts of the city where this is occurring more? or is it just kind of throughout our whole city? It's all across the city, but it's mainly in alleyways. So areas of the cities, that, the older sections of the cities that had the original alleyways, those tend to be the worst because we have 300 gallon containers in some of those. Uh, they also invite uh, dumping because they have a larger capacity. So instead of the normal 96 gallon container that most of our residents have, we have 300 gallon containers in a lot of these. Well, in some of these areas, those 300 gallon containers allow for capacity so people that want to illegally dump drive up and down the alleys filling up the 300 gallon containers with the illegal material right. so when that happens the residents that live there also don't have an opportunity to throw away their own trash because the containers are full right. so it, it is more prevalent in those areas as a result of that we're actually going through a hot spot mapping all of these okay. and we're looking for where are the hot spots where are we having our biggest problems and we're removing 300 gallons and providing 96 gallon containers for those residents to combat that. You talked about this plan um, focused on prevention, education, or enforcement and education. Can we uh, start with prevention and uh, what the city is doing on that front? Sure, so we've got the three-pronged approach and on the prevention side, we're, we're working with several different divisions, code enforcement, City of Columbus code enforcement. We've done some training with them and our, our solid waste inspectors, they're working together. So that way, if it's a code issue is on private property, solid waste inspectors handles the public right-of-way. So if the trash is on private property, code handles it, but if it's in the public right-of-way, the solid waste inspector has to handle it okay. by our code. So those two groups now are working hand-in-hand, hand, so that way someone can't simply move from private property into the public right-of-way and consider it a non-code issue anymore. So we've closely coordinated those. That way we can combine those efforts and we're working with each other in those aspects. And then we're also working with the Division of Police to work on enforcement in the city attorney's office to get more convictions on these types of actions. I know that um, we, we did, we worked a little bit with code enforcement um, and their department and Director Shoney put that team together. What specifically do, you know, are they like the extreme cases of illegal dumping that they are assigned to or, or what's their role? 
So code enforcement handles just on the private property, but what, what had occurred in the past is because if code were orders, we weren't always coordinating with the Division of Refuse and we weren't coordinating our efforts with them. So sometimes we would be working on separate cases at the same address and instead of combining those and making a better case and holding them more accountable. So we're, we've had cross training from their code enforcement officers with our solid waste inspectors and we're also are now aware of some tools that we have available to us to make sure if code has orders on a house already then we can attach to those orders to get ours resolved faster and vice versa we're also working with the division of uh, building services to make sure if someone's got a uh, building permit or not because a lot of those renovations those are the materials ending up in alleys mm -hmm. so when we find those materials we try to identify the location they came from yeah. And then we'll work with building services to ensure that they had the proper building permit and that they're pr properly disposing of those materials. So if you are caught uh, doing this and illegally dumping, what are like the fines and um, the, the consequences of that? Two different ways you can go with the city attorney's office. Once we file charges through them, they would bring it up and based on Ohio revised code and city code, those fines vary depending on the severity of it and the type of material that it is. Uh, we're working on uh, trying to increase those fines, but currently it's up to a thousand dollar fine and up to six months in jail as a, if it's a, a minor misdemeanor or it's a misdemeanor one and lower fines at the lower levels. Uh, so that's the maximum. So that it varies. And then we also work with the Environmental Crimes Task Force on some of our larger cases. Uh, I can tell that there's a lot of passion coming from you about um, stopping illegal dumping and preventing it. Um, what could you share with us why you feel so? convicted that you know this is something that we need that our community needs to collaborate together and put an end to certainly yeah as i drive around the city this is the critical factor in a lot of these communities that is keeping those people from you know the residents in those areas from having a nice neighborhood which then increases property values increases businesses so this has that aspect of it it also a lot of the illegally dumped material ends up getting into our waterways and our streams and stuff, so it has an environmental impact. So you've got this, the economic impact and you also have the environmental impact of that. And let's face it, no one wants to live where there's trash. The community education aspect of this issue. So you mentioned before that, you know, sometimes it's out of, you know, when I ask the question why people do it, sometimes it's because they don't have enough knowledge on the issue. What would you say um, about the education aspect of this and how we can get more, learn more information about illegal dumping. Certainly. So as you probably may have noticed recently in the news, we're you know, making sure we're getting it out through the media, items like this, but then we're also working with landlords, tenants, and people that are changing over uh, residents regularly to try to give them our pamphlets that describe how to properly dispose of and work with those. Uh, groups because that tends to be an area that it sh we struggle with uh, when we don't know the Division of Refuse would not know when a tenant changes so the new tenant comes in we don't know if they know how to properly dispose of it so we're trying to work with the landlords to make sure every time they change tenants they give them that information on what to do with their disposal and then how to properly schedule bulk through the city of Columbus through the 6453111 how to go about those so we avoid some of these issues. So like all the resources are here with the city, you know, to prevent this, but it's just that people aren't reaching out and taking the initiative to go through those steps. That is correct. And then you have a few bad actors that are simply doing it from financial reasons. They don't want to pay to properly dispose of that construction, but the majority of this out there can be prevented. So what can residents do to help? Main thing they can do is contact 311 when they see illegal dumping as quickly as they see it, notify us, and if they can provide us with any information, if, if they saw who did it, if they saw where it came from, any information that may lead our investigators to help combat that and stop it from happening in, in the future, and then also hold them accountable for what we do find now. Do you think, um, in your experience, are, people, are offenders usually one-time offenders, so is it hard to track down, or are they typically more than one? Uh, there's a few one-time offenders, but we have a lot of repeat offenders out there, and that's what we're going after uh, in each of the neighborhoods, that we, and that's what we're tracking. They tend to be, we believe, 15 to 20 bad actors in each of these neighborhoods that are doing a lot of the illegal dumping when it comes to the construction debris. The other type of materials, there are a lot of times one-time efforts that we can hopefully com uh, combat through the education side of it. Do you have anything that you would like to add um, and let the viewers know? No, I, what I'd like to add is just 
this is something the city of Columbus may, under Mayor Ginther that we're taking very seriously, that we are trying to put a lot of effort into this and that we are going to combat this. We're going to come at it strong and you're just going to continue to see this focus on illegal dumping throughout the city of Columbus. For more information on how you can get involved in preventing illegal dumping, please go to www.columbus.gov slash public service. If you see a problem that involves illegal dumping, call the city at 614-645-3111. Thanks for watching City Chat on CTV.